Well, good morning, everyone. This is our last week of Fully Free series. We have had so much fun just praying and diving into these messages with you. Today, we're going to be talking about life in the kingdom. Life in the kingdom. How do we do life here with the perspective of there? It's going to be a great time. We're going to talk about God's response to us in our lives. We'll be talking about authority, lordship, and transformation, and spiritual warfare. That's a lot, right? We're going to dive into it. Bobby said at the very first of these time we got together that these were foundational, right? So these are the foundations. So we hope what it really does is awakens your appetite. There's so much more that God has for you. But we want to lay that foundation today in these topics. But before we dive in, Bobby's going to open us in prayer. Praise God. You guys will join me. Just first of all, before we go into this time of prayer, I just want to reflect and, and just um, be thankful. Uh, so grateful for the, um, the speaking of the word that's happened this morning already. And I just pray, Father, that our hearts, Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you help us? Help us to open our hearts to you, to receive life, all that you have for us. We're so grateful. We're grateful that each, each day and each moment we get to know you more. So Lord, we just praise you. We worship you. We glorify your name. And as your word is spoken, we pray that you call it to come to pass. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, we're talking about a lifestyle of freedom, a lifestyle. This is not a one and done, but what we're really talking about is a journey of walking with Jesus Christ, our Savior. Scripture tells us best in 2 Corinthians 3. It says, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with an ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, which is spirit. I want to pull out verse 17 in the Passion Translation. It says, now the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit. And wherever he is Lord, there is freedom. Lord means supreme in authority. Supreme in authority. Wherever he is supreme in authority in our lives, there is freedom. So we would ask, so where is the Spirit of the Lord? When you first came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Spirit of God came to live on the inside of you. But how far inside do we really let him go? Where do we let him be supreme in authority in our lives? Another way to say it is how far and how much of our lives do we allow him to be the supreme in authority? Sometimes we have hidden places inside of us, not only inside of us, but we have hidden places inside of different spheres, like maybe our work area, or maybe within a certain group of friends. We have certain areas that we have walled off from the Holy Spirit. And the Lord desires to get into those places that we've walled off for him because he knows that it is going to bring us such incredible freedom in our lives. Paul says it best in Philippians 3, it says, not that I've already obtained all of this, or have I already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. We go from glory to glory with the Lord. God begins to reveal things to us and show us, and we begin to walk in this healing. So glory to glory. God reveals, and God will heal it. What does it really mean to be under the lordship of Jesus Christ? It's not just surrendering our will about stuff. So we like to give the example of hitchhiking to, to paint a better picture of this. Picture you're driving along the road in your car and you see Jesus and he's hitchhiking. 
And so you pull over your car and you're like, get in, Jesus, you can ride shotgun. Wherever you tell me to go, I'll go. If you want me to go faster, I'll go faster. If you want me to stop, whatever you say, Jesus, that's what I'm going to do. I want to show you today that that is not lordship. Getting out of the driver's seat, walking around the car, you ride in shotgun. Jesus has the steering wheel. He has the gas. He has the brakes. This is what lordship is, complete, and it's a beautiful thing. Matthew 7, 21 says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Do you know that Jesus modeled lordship? Jesus modeled it. Look, let's look at John 5. It says, Jesus then, Jesus gave them the answer. Very truly, I tell you, the son can do nothing by himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. Well, we can't talk about authority without first talking about transformation. Transformation, um, by definition, is a thorough or dramatic change in form or appearance. I think it was so wonderful, so vivid, as Kirsten was sharing. Could you guys see the imagery behind those bones? how dramatic that is, how the change that had to happen in the people's hearts, it was dramatic. A thorough change has to happen. This is transformation. You see, we've been giving so much more than most of us even realize. When we came to Christ, when we accepted him, he gave us a brand new life. We became new creatures in Christ. Amen? I said amen. 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 You got to start believing this. Mm -hmm. Praise God. That was, that was it. While we were, I was out there worshiping, I just felt this on the inside of me that I wanted to even say it to you guys, so I guess I will. Mm. Would you just believe? Yeah. <laughs> will you just believe it? Let it come into your being. Yeah. What's happening here? What God wants to do and receive what he has for us. You see, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. It's a dramatic change in our lives. Romans 12, it tells us, it says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, offer your bodies Offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will for you. Amen. You see, we are learning to know God. Praise God that we have that opportunity. He does that, and if you read further down into Romans, you'll see that he begins to share with them that each one of you are members of the body, that there are giftings placed within you that are to be used, and that we work together in this, in this work that Christ has given us as new creatures, new crea a new creation in him. I love that Paul talks about further down, he, he reveals to them, he says, I have this privilege, but I also have authority. He says, I walk in the authority that's been given to me by Christ. You see, we need to understand something. First of all, there's a definition for authority and there's a definition we need to understand about power. You see, power, this is what God has, right? Mm -hmm. It's the strength, the ability to do something. Praise God for that. Mm -hmm. Praise God that he can do something. Mm -hmm. That song we sang said he can do anything he wants to. Right. He can heal or deliver, set free anything he wants to. 
But then we have to understand what authority is. See, Paul knew what authority was and is to him. Authority is simply this. It's delegated power, right? And it has this concept in being sent out. So when God sends me out to do something, I now have the power and the ability or the authority, the delegated authority to walk in it, right? This is what we're called to do. But we have to be under authority, right? Mm -hmm. We have to recognize his lordship in our life so that we can be in a place of authority, that delegated power operating within our lives. And we must learn to surrender to his lordship every day. If you look in Acts, you can see the problem with a life not truly submitted to the Lord, but trying to go out and do, right? It's those sons of Sceva in Acts 19. It says some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried. See that? They tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you, come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. And one day, an evil spirit answered them. Jesus I know. Paul, I know about. But who are you? And then the man who had that evil spirit, it says he jumped on them, he overpowered them, went so far as to beat them up and strip them naked and they had to run out of there. I don't want to walk in like that. (laughs) I know you don't either. And so we really need to develop our understanding of how to function in the authority that Jesus has given us. It helps if you can think of it this way. A police officer, right? How many of you recognize a police officer doesn't have the power to stop a speeding car? You see that? Right? They're not a 4,000 pound solid piece of concrete. They can't stop a speeding car. What do they have? They have authority that's been delegated to them by the government who can bring the power, right? They know that. That's why they can walk in that authority. You see, when we surrender and we do what God's sending us out to do, he's there. He's ready to back it up. Praise God. Before I share this story, I want to I share the, the scripture before I share a story. It's in uh, Luke chapter 10, verse 19. In this passage, Jesus is telling his disciples, he's sending them out in pairs. He says, I've given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy, nothing will harm you. Do you see it? Do you see the power? Do you see the authority? And that because they're walking in that, no harm can come to them. That's what he's saying. So I'll share a story with you. It's about Tanya and I. We've been partnered up a few times in our lives, actually a lot over the course of time. We're brother and sister, really, in Christ. As you know, as I'm, brother, I'm a brother with all of you too. Um, but I've spent a lot of time ministering with Tanya. And uh, our first trip to Cambodia, dad took us to Cambodia, but Tanya and I went in our, in, under our licensure as nurses. And uh, we participated in um, uh, providing clinic setting care uh, to, to villagers, hundreds of villagers that would come and in, be in need of care. And Tanya and I were a part of a team. We weren't the only nurses there. Um, but we were there with that team doing that, and Dad would preach. And uh, what happened to Tanya and I is we found ourselves praying with almost everybody that we came to get care. <laughs> it just happened that way because they needed it, yep. didn't they, Tanya? Yeah, they needed right. it. Um, and so it was fabulous. We loved it. Um, but one day we were doing this, and uh, a woman came, and it really came up, up to Tanya. I was with Tanya. We were paired together. But um, this woman began to speak to Tanya about an ailment she felt she had. And so what she described was that she would have these moments of complete fear and anxiety, overwhelming fear and anxiety would just come upon her. And then this would be so bad that she would actually lose her vision during these times. 
And Tanya and I both recognized immediately there was a spiritual aspect to what was going on in her life. And using the authority God gave us, Tanya really led this, but began to minister to this woman about Christ, revealing to her who Christ was and how he could change this situation. Mm -hmm. We led her to Christ. We prayed over her and we cast out that spirit so it could no longer have authority over her. Mm -hmm. Praise God. God. This is what people need from you. But you first have to be in that position, that rightful position, being mindful of what Christ is sending you out to do and being willing to do that. I love it. Um, in Galatians 3.2, it says this, just in case you're worried about it a little bit, if, it, if it's based on your performance, I think Kent did a great job. I think Kirsten did a great job of sharing with us the reality of this. He says, I would like to learn one thing from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? This is why I felt impressed to say to you, believe. You see, I can't perform well enough. All the workings of the law, I will fail at. But when I come into alignment with Christ, when I begin to believe and receive what he's saying about me and about himself, I begin to participate with him. You see, these things that Jesus was doing and that, and that the disciples were doing, they were done by the power of the Spirit and the authority that they walked in because of their connection to him. You see, walking in authority and power comes from that place of relationship with God. It's that simple. When we surrender to him, when we recognize him as our Lord and that he is God, and that he can do all things. Then he comes to us. He dwells in us. Mm-hmm. And he works through us. Praise God for that. God. As we walk with him, he leads us right into places. Just like Tanya and I walked into of spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. Well, spiritual warfare alone, just the name freaks a lot of people out. But spiritual warfare really is the battle in which voice you are going to choose to listen to in the midst of your circumstances. Everything that we do empowers one kingdom or another. Everything we do. It is that, it is that way. We live in a fallen world. We are not devil-focused, but we are Jesus-focused and we are kingdom-focused an illustration that we give to kind of lay this out of what might be devil focused is you're getting up one morning to go to church. You've got your family ready and you go out and all your tires are flat and you'll hear people say the devil flattened my tires. Well, we don't necessarily think that the devil was out there poking holes in your tires, but what we do believe is that the enemy is there to whisper about what that means. He's wanting to get our attention, to draw it to that negative instead of shifting our gaze to what our loving Father is saying. Asking God in that moment in the pause, God, what are you saying? God, you saw what was happening, but but why is this allowing? What is this pause that you're placing in my life? And so we begin to shift our attention to a loving God, asking him to show us what what he's doing in this moment. You see, praise is a problem for your problem. Amen. Pastor Terry taught me that, but it's the truth. The enemy wants the glory. He wants the credit. He wants the focus. But when we begin to look to the creator of all things and hear what he's saying, we look like Jesus. Jesus did not live in reaction to the devil. Jesus did not live in reaction to his circumstances. Jesus lived in response to the Father. Amen. And that's what he invites us to. That's what living a life here from the perspective of there is, that we see and we're in response to a loving father. So not even a flattened tires and and everything that we had planned for that day goes away. But when we hear what God's doing in that moment, we begin to walk in ways that we didn't think we could walk before. I am passionate about spiritual warfare. I, I joke and I tell people that I, I came out of the womb fighting and 
Although it's funny and I laugh and usually people laugh, there actually is a lot of truth to that. In part of my testimony, um, my mom had shared with me that I had these night terrors and nightmares from, she said, when I was a, a bitty infant. She said before I could talk, any of that, very little. And the pediatrician actually put me on medicine to help me sleep through the night. Of course, I don't remember that far back. But as far back as I can remember, I encountered these very demonic dreams and very demonic encounters, and they followed me into my um, adulthood life. And I remember one time as I was sharing with my husband, like, babe, I, because see, here's the deal. I was doing all the things that church taught me to do, and it wasn't working. <laughs> and so I went to my husband, and I'm like, babe, I, I'm saying this scripture. And he said, well, it's not a potion, babe. And I got so mad. Oh, I got so mad at him. I'm like, it is the word of God. I am saying the scripture, Terry. That's how I said it. Because when I always put the Terry on the end of it, he's right. Always, darn it. 33 years of marriage, it's true. But what that started was I started to go to the Lord about those things. And I started to ask him, wait a minute, am I just quoting it like a potion? And as I began to talk to the Lord about my relationship with him and what was going on, he began to encounter me at a deeper level, and I began to connect with him like I talk to you guys about a lot, is connecting to God as my father. You know, I, I remember the last time I saw that demonic face. I was 27 or 28. I'm not exactly sure, but I know it's right before we moved to Kingfisher. We lived in Piedmont. And you know what happened when I had that encounter that night? I didn't even say the name of Jesus. I didn't quote a single scripture. But you know what I said? I said, I don't think my loving father wants you here scaring me like this. So I'll tell you what. You go ask him. And if he tells you that you can be here scaring me, go ahead. Because whatever happens to me, I'm with him. But if he tells you he doesn't want you here scaring me, I don't ever want to see you again. I was done. And guess what? I have never seen that face again. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I have nightmares just like the rest of you. And I've had bad encounters, but nothing like that ever again. Spiritual forces are empowered by human agreement. Hmm. Human agreement. Spiritual forces are empowered by human agreement. The real change came in me walking in my authority that God came. It came from knowing in my heart that I'm his. Believing, as Bobby said earlier. My belief, my level of belief now matched who I was in Christ. Mm -hmm. Something had shifted. I, I was his child but now I believed it, and I stood on that. It was not me just saying or repeating scripture. It was believing and knowing. This comes from a relationship with the loving Father. That's why we're here. It's so much deeper. There's a scripture that's really foundational. You hear people talk about it a lot in spiritual warfare, and they misquote it all the time. I even hear pastors do it. Resist the devil and he will flee. But I want us to take a moment and look at the actual scripture in James 4, 7. It says, submit yourselves then to God. There it is. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee just like we've been saying, whichever kingdom you are empowering here on earth, you're partnering with. If you are not submitted to God, as much as you love him, if you're doing your own thing, you are partnering with the other side. That's why he says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And one last thing I want to share to, with you guys before I turn it back over to Bobby because I think it's important. The enemy is an opportunist. And some of you have heard my testimony and you're gonna get freedom. 
because you're gonna start really digging in with your relationship with God and you're gonna start to really realize that it's, it is the power of the name of Jesus, but it's what the name of Jesus did in that relationship. And as you connect and you begin to walk in that freedom, you're gonna be so excited, it's gonna be awesome. But the enemy's gonna come back around and you're gonna to have to face it again. And you're thinking, no, I don't think so, Tanya. Well, it happened with Jesus, let's look. Luke 4, 13, when the devil had finished all the tempting, he left him until the opportune time. But don't be afraid, because when it comes back around and you have to battle whatever that is, whether it's an addiction, whether it's your low self-esteem, whatever that battle is in your life that you're sick of being sick of it, when you finally walk in that victory and you're, you taste the fruit and then all of a sudden you have to be aware because that thing will come back around. For me, I got set free from a spirit of addiction, uh, not addiction, but a spirit of rejection. I had that thing for a long time thinking that people didn't like me, all these things. Occasionally, every once in a while, that thing will come back and I'll be like, that's not my voice and that's not my father's voice. That's that spirit. You got to go. I don't let it settle in anymore. So when it comes around again, you do what you did before. Mm. You're submitted to God. You resist the devil. You tell him to flee. There's an acronym I love so much, and it's called BOW, B-O-W. You believe. You believe you are who he says you are. You believe. You obey. You do what he tells you to do. Put on the armor of God. Stand against the devil. And you worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Because when you begin to worship him and God stands up to see his child worshiping, the enemy flees. Amen. He cannot stand that worship. So don't be discouraged. Just run back to your father and say, I knew you were coming. I believe who I am. I'm obeying what he says. I'm worshiping and you've got to go. Amen. Amen. That's why God word, God's word reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. He says this, we live in the world. We do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power. See the word power there? To dem demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You see, God wants it very clear. We're not waging war the way you think we should. And if you listen to the world, the world will tell you this, that there's a great battle between good and evil that continues on. The reality is, is that God already won. It's already been defeated. Jesus said, I saw, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. You know why? Because he lost immediately. Satan can't fight God. He can't. He has no power to do it. Except that he can come to you and me. And he can speak to us. It's unfortunate to say that many of us are used to hearing his voice. To being convinced by the enemy in our minds. To adopting and believing lies. Instead of recognizing the truth in what God says. Satan uses this world. Everything around you, your environment, he's using that to inform you. To bring you to a place of speculation. A place where you rely on reasoning, your own reasoning or others, rather than the written word of God and his voice speaking to you. It's why we must learn to come to God in prayer to spend time with him regularly. What's the Bible say about that? Pray often. Matter of fact, pray all the time. Why? Because when we pray, we have an opportunity. We can exchange what we see for what he says and what he sees. It may not look this way to me, God, but what do you see? That should be our daily practice. Maybe minute by minute for some of us, we need that. 
This is what happened to the children of Israel at the Red Sea. Do you remember that story? I was reading on that a little bit and realized, in my mind, they had um, just left Egypt and arrived at the Red Sea. That was a 24-day journey. Here's the thing about that, that that stuck with me. Oftentimes, we feel the move of God. We sense his presence. He does amazing things in our lives. And we try to live on that for the next 30 or 40 days. And then we come up against something that presses against what we know or should know. And it begins to show us a different picture. And this is where they found themselves up against the Red Sea now, 24 days later, 500 miles down the road, or 300 or whatever, but several hundred miles down the road. (laughs) And they're pressed against the sea, and they're full of fear and doubt and worry. Although they've seen all this wonderful thing that God had done in their life, today they needed him. So what do we know about that story? What really happened? They needed to see what God was going to do. And it was a process in their life. And let me tell you, God is working you through a process. He's ready to partner with you and show you from day to day, moment to moment, how he wants to partner with you to destroy the work of the enemy in your life, just the way that he did for these Israelites. Remember who was attacked? The Egyptians, right? Who died? Their enemy. That's the power of God working in our lives. And it's vital that we learn to come into agreement with God. What's he really saying right now? What does he see? And we need to get used to asking him. Because when we see and when he shares what he sees... My heart is transformed. Amen? Amen. Something changes in me. And this is the lifestyle of freedom. This is how we walk out being transformed. Renewing our minds with what God says, his word says. Learning and understanding our true identity in Christ the way Tanya shared. Who God says that you are. And making that connection between you and God and understanding what your part in this is, but fully understanding what his is. Here's some scriptures that we want to close with. Matthew 28, 18 says, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. Praise God. I love this. I think this, this course that we've been walking through over the last four weeks is really the beginning of discipleship, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. It's a learning to... to Rely on God and to, and to understand our connection to each other as the body of Christ and how we work together, we share with each other, and help each other. Mm-hmm. Right? This is what we're called to, people. This is what you're a part of. It stuck with me so hard when Kirsten was sharing that when those bones came to life, they became an army. They were an army. It's what we're called to be. Luke 10, and we'll close, says, However, your real source of joy isn't merely that spirits submit to your authority, but that your names are written in the journals of heaven, that you belong to God's kingdom. You do. And this is true source of your authority. Then Jesus, I love this part, he was overflowing with the Holy Spirit's joy. He exclaimed, Father, thank you. For you are Lord supreme over heaven and earth. You have hidden 
the great revelation of this authority from those who are proud. Those, who's, those wise in their own eyes. And you have shared it with these who humble themselves. Yes, Father, this is what pleases your heart. To give these things to those who are like trusting children. That's our opportunity today. To give our hearts to him like trusting children. But there's so much more behind that. There's so much ahead of us together as a body of Christ. I always say God's part and our part. It's so true. His part is a beautiful thing. We are his children. And as we surrender to him, he has a beautiful thing ahead of us. This is what they say in the Greek, a kairos moment, a God-appointed time. And as Bobby's getting ready to lead us in prayer, I don't want us to just close our eyes and start thinking about what we're going to do for lunch and what's next because I really believe God wants to encounter us. He's been doing it since the start of the service today. I think there's something really special about today and that God wants us to see and he wants to, us to encounter his heart. Father God wants you to encounter him as your father. When we touch God, he touches us back. Hmm. So I just want us to open our hearts and Bobby, just go ahead and lead us in. Yeah. So, so before Tanya and I start us in prayer, what I would ask is, I, I really would like our prayer team to come forward now. Will you do that? Those are in prayer today? Or even not, just come on up. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, that'd be great. Come on up. Leanne, Tim, yeah. I was feeling that too in my yeah. spirit. Um, for those of you that maybe would be a little leery to come up for prayer, this is a normal part of a Christian life. And there's something, it's not that there's anything different, but these people God has chosen. And there's a just stepping out in faith and coming mm. and receiving prayer. Sometimes like um, Pastor Terry said many times, just getting the faith to get out of your seat and come receive that prayer, it's a powerful thing. And so we want to open that up, and we don't want it to just be part of this, or we want you to come receive today. Yeah, I believe that, that some of you, this will be an act of faith for you if you would just be willing to believe and step out and receive what God wants for you. So if you'll get with, or just join me in a, as I pray. Father, we just open our hearts to you. Lord, Help us as we surrender. Truly surrender. Lord, I believe today that many are, are hearing and, and recognizing your activity in their life. Lord, that you're calling them to deeper places and that you're calling them to freedom. Lord, but there's barriers to that. There's strongholds that have developed in, in some of our lives, Lord. And that you want to help tear those down. And so as we surrender our hearts to you, Lord, do what only you can do. The one who has the power. And take your rightful place, Lord, in our hearts as we seek you, Lord, you said we'd find you. And we seek you today, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray.